This is a spider room somewhere in Germany. Time again to feed the tarantulas in my collection. Huge hairy creatures are waiting for a suitable meal to pass. Giant bird-eating spiders like this Xenestis from Colombia need big food. Forest cockroaches from Argentina, specially bred for feeding purposes. Beside of these, I prefer the African field cricket in various stages. For very tiny spiderlings, baby tarantulas, fruit flies are a good food source. They could be easily bred. Please search the internet for recipes how to do it. A sub-adult specimen of Pecleferia regalis from India, feeding on a field cricket. A whole bunch of specimens is kept in a communal tank. For that reason, it is necessary to provide food at almost all times. Fangs like Count Dracula. A large therophosid spider must be able to tackle very large prey. Fortunately, several species of the genus Picolotheria from India and Sri Lanka could be kept together in a group of specimens. If you are going to feed your tarantula spiders, make sure that the specimens are not about to mold, which means to shed their skin. In these cases, a tarantula spider will refuse all kinds of food. You may recognize an upcoming mold, depending on the species, for example, on the production of vast amounts of silk. Some species, like this Picolotheria metallica, could turn a little darker. A freshly molded specimen of Lasiodora parahalbana from Brazil. You should make sure before this happens that all live food is removed from the tarantula enclosure. Wait for another week or so before start the feeding again. If a tarantula spider is carrying an exec, like this Honduran curly haired tarantula, I prefer not to offer food at this time. There may be individual females that also take food in the period of egg carrying, but this is a fact rarely seen. The Mexican red rum tarantula on the hunt. The Lilto Kettle Vegans is a fast spider when it's dinner time. Megaphobema mesomelas from the highland areas of Costa Rica in Central America. This female has already caught a field cricket. But of course a single one wouldn't be enough for a spider of this size. When it gets darker, she may catch all the crickets roaming around in her tank. A large juvenile Costa Rican redleg feeding on crickets that should be a little smaller. This beautiful species of tarantula needs a very special care. You have to provide a high humidity and cooler temperatures. It is quite simple to check out if the spider you keep is well fed. Just compare the size of the abdomen with that of the carapace. They should be both equally sized. This special specimen has molted about a week ago and now she will catch all the food offered. 
this Xenestis species, yet undescribed, is always a hungry bird eater. Crickets, locusts and cockroaches make a perfect diet also for a spider of this size. In the genus Therophosa, originating from South America, you may find the largest and heaviest spiders on Earth. Adult spiders can easily reach the size of a dinner plate. From time to time I also offer bigger prey to these spiders. This could be a dead small mouse or a slice of chicken meat. In the wild large tarantula spiders have been observed to catch for example a bat. If a ground dwelling tarantula finds a dead bird or a small mammal to feed on they will also take this option. A theraphosid spider reacts to movement. Hollow hairs play a very important part in this mechanical action. Another Burgundy Goliath bird-eating tarantula, Theraphosa stermi, feeding in the shelter of her burrow. Big adult females of Theraphosa may have the longest fangs in the spider world. These can reach almost 2 cm. With such enormous fangs, a Theraphosa can easily catch a small snake. I observed by myself that huge female of Theraphosa cracked a pencil in half. So always bear in mind to keep your fingers away from the front of these large creatures. However, a tarantula spider is not a bitey thing in general. Mostly, when disturbed, these spiders disappear into their burrow and are not aggressive. Brachypelma albiceps from Mexico can be voracious feeders. Species of the genus Brachypelma are much sought after pet tarantulas because of their nice coloration. This one here seriously needs another mold. Because of her digging a burrow, she nearly lost all the hairs on her front legs. Another spider from Mexico is Brachypelma hemori. This adult female is one of my oldest spiders. She is nearly 20 years old. Members of the genus Brachypelma can reach an age of about 30 years. This very old lady only eats once in a month and she sheds her skin almost every two or three years. A spiderling of Theraphosa blondi, the Goliath tarantula. If you feed these spiders very well, let's say about every eight or nine days, they grow rapidly. But, and this is very important, always keep in mind not to overfed your spider. If the abdomen reaches an enormous size, it is highly likely that the spider can be injured by just falling down while climbing. 
this giant black Peruvian Pamphavichus antinus female tries to protect her abdomen from the cricket roaming around. She simply lifts it up as high as she can. But Antinous wouldn't be a big black Peruvian tarantula spider if she lets a cricket disappear. A spectacular spider from Venezuela is the green bottle blue tarantula named Chromatopelma. Lasiodora from Brazil finally caught its prey. I keep a number of curly haired tarantulas, Tilinto cattle albopilosum, from my own breeding program. This species of spider is easy to keep and breed and will take food at all times very happily. If you now observe this spider carefully, you may see that the spinrets at the end of the abdomen produce a silken carpet. It seems as if the spider is just dancing, but it has another reason. To a certain point of time, the prey is placed on the silken carpet and wept over. Scientists presume that the protein in the silk helps the spider to digest its prey. About once in a week, or at least every two weeks, I have a spider feeding day in my collection. And I have to say that it could be exhausting work when you have to care for hundreds of baby spiders. But of course it's a pleasure for a tarantula hobbyist to see the spiders grow and doing nicely. Meanwhile, in a neighboring tank, another Theraphosa stermi has begun to catch the prey offered. This female is doing the same as the young albopilosum. She weaves a bed of silk on the soil. Before you ask, yes, this spider had an egg sac a couple of weeks ago. That's the reason why her abdomen is really small and the sides of it are hairless. It's time now to bring energy back into this female. Energy that is seriously needed in a few months when this spider is about to shed her skin. This species is often colored in the brown of a roe deer when the malt is about to come. After that, several specimens are almost entirely black. As I said, Theraphosa has very powerful fangs. But as in every spider, the mouth itself is really tiny and the spider is only able to suck the liquids. When you make the decision to become a Theraphosa spider keeper, make sure you can provide vast amount of food. This genus is really a voracious feeder. Very old males of a tarantula spider rarely take food. Like this old male albopilosum curly hair tarantula. Males will never reach the age of a female. 
and I am always happy when I can see an old trooper like him accepting the food that I throw into the cage. The size of the food doesn't really matter when it comes in quantity. A sub-adult male, Pamphobetrius antinus, big black, from Peru. On the next morning, no cricket is left. Tarantula spiders are fascinating creatures to look at and to keep as a pet. You will find a lot of other videos on tarantula spiders on this YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and I would be delighted if you could leave a like or a comment.